Thank you. Well, it is Easter, Easter weekend, Easter day. Um, and for the folks online, we have 800 re requests, <laughs> um, playful hope, <laughs> resurrection, joy, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Several requests that we'll do our best to weave in our way. A nice, uh, the way we do things, uh, inspiration, God. Uh, you know, today it's an Easter weekend, but I don't, again, do holiday talks. You know, in 18 such and such, Easter, you know, unless that's what comes out, you know, it's fine. But generally, I, I, uh, I blend a few things when I do what I do, and, and it's for all of us, really. We think that we're separate beings. We think there's some people, you know, see maybe there's a God, but to some of us, you know, we know God and then we know there's us. And so we live in this kind of strange, separated experience. But there's, you know, there's the knowing of God, but then there's human beings, and human beings are either sleeping or waking. And um, we kind of know, you know, sleep, which ones are <laughs> asleep. They're hateful, they're hurtful, fear-based, aggressive, and so on. Um, those who are waking, they, you, you start to change. You can just feel something's changing. That is a small, that's a microcosm of being crucified and resurrecting. You know, we've kind of made, like Easter, you know, we say to people, hi, happy Easter, without even realizing what we're saying. That's what you're really saying over in Safeway and Walmart today. Happy Easter. You're saying happy resurrection. But do they understand what you just said? You, you just told them you were affirmed that they're resurrecting. Now, I'm not saying they're going to do this, but technically they could stop and go, did I die well? You know, you're wishing me resurrection. Wait, wait, wait. Did I die well? Do, did I really resurrect? If you're wishing me, affirming me to resurrect, am I doing? Because you can't resurrect unless you die well. And you can't ascend. Everybody's with their ascension, you know, in Sedona. <laughs> oh, gosh. God, people, you know? <laughs> yeah, some of you are just getting here, and you're already wanting to ascend. Um, that's called dissociation, by the way. <laughs> um, so how you cannot ascend without resurrecting, can't resurrect unless... You've gone through the crucifixion. Jesus puts it, you can only ascend as highly as you descend. What does he mean? Like, wow. Like, have you worked your stuff? Oh, no, not me. I'm going to be up here. You're walking around in your upper three chakras. Look at me. I take beautiful aura photos. Purple, gold, you know. <laughs> but you're a terrible date, you know. First of all, get in your body, show up on time for the date. Second of all, can we have fun? Or are we just going to ohm together? Um, I'm sorry. I don't even know where that all... Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'm venting dating frustrations. Now. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this world, you know, it's, you, you can't bliss bunny yourself. Bunny, get it? Easter. You, <laughs> These bliss bunnies, it's, it's, it's not real. It's not practical. However, that said, and laughter aside, I understand. Because those who want to be the bliss bunnies, they want to, oh, I'm just spacing out. You know, it's only pain that makes them want to do that. It's only unhealed wounds. So uh, when I make jokes about it, it's because I make jokes about everything about planet Earth. But because it's a joke, you know? But, but, <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> take earth, please. Um, so this world is one of pain and it makes us dissociate and, and space out. But then there's people that handle it another way. They get here and they become fighters and haters. You know, survival of the fittest. It's very tragic to me. But this is the human condition. I, I, to make it, I either have to fight or flight. Freeze, it's another form of dissociating, really. 
But nobody explained it. Hey, listen, I'll, let me show you, he says, Jesus, 2,000 years ago. Let me show you. You are glorious beings. And we all sit around, and, you know, I say we as, as though you remember sitting there. But we, <laughs> we sit there at the Sermon on the Mount and other times, and he's talking, and we're, wow, this is amazing. Sermon on the Mount, like great teachers do. Moments of just downloading incredible teachings. Well, he did that. But he didn't then die like every other spiritual teacher master. He, that's not, oh no, not Jesus. He's going to take it another level. You enjoyed my teachings, the downloads? Yes, we did. Lord, great. This is wonderful. Great. Miracles, rising from the dead. All these amazing things that few people could ever have done. Doing these amazing miracles, he's going to go, I'm going to go one step further. Because my telling you about God and love and heaven and so on isn't enough. I want you to understand it at a completely different level. So watch. I'm going to show you some practical work here. Not talking it. Watch. So he allows himself to get arrested, betrayed by one friend, denied by another friend, and so on. He's going to go the full yard, the full, the full gamut. He's showing us. I can talk about love and joy and peace and whatever. But that's not going to be the complete story to get you home, to resurrect and ascend to, the, to another level. Let's take it another level. And he, he allows himself to be arrested and beat to a pulp. He's, he's whipped the maximum number of times. People don't realize this. The Romans were experts at murder. They knew how many lashings would kill a person. And... What did he do? He takes the number of lashes that's one shy of death. You see? They beat him to a pulp. Now, is he doing this to be the, the human type of martyr? Like, woe is me. Well, here's what a martyr does. Oh, I didn't do anything to deserve any of this. He never said a word. He didn't say, how could you people? He didn't do any of that. That's what we do when we're fake martyrs. Fake meaning ego-based martyrs. He's saying this world will take itself out on you. It's stuff out on you. But it isn't real. You are holy beings. He's not expecting you to not feel pain. He does another trick. And he says, I'm showing you this world has no power over you. I'm not just telling you. As a teacher, I'm showing you. He's beat up near death and he still is loving everyone. Perfect, holy love. Not talked about. We should all love one another and peace and be forgiving. And he does it. Lives it. So as they're crucifying him, they think they're killing <clears throat> Jesus the Christ or Jesus. And what he's doing is, by being put up on a cross, a cross has four points. And like in astrology, your symbol for the earth, typically a circle with an X. An X is a symbol of the earth, the four elements. It's a, it's a symbol of matter. So when you crucify Jesus, or anybody for that matter, because the crucifix, again, means this world gets the best of you. Whether the cross is like so, or whether it's an X, so ancient, ancient uh, um, spiritual society, secret societies, they often did, like the ancient Egyptians, they would do this crucifixion on an X or the Native Americans doing the Sundance ritual. It was always a symbol of being hung up and trancing out of this world, having power over you and into the power of God. When you went to a Sundance ritual, you were saying goodbye to the body. It has no effect on me. Who am I really? God. Sundance is about the Son of God that you are, ultimately. So Jesus goes through this, takes on all of this, and he's doing two major things. One, he's showing you this world has no power. He's doing a couple of incredible things while being crucified. You know, we're like, I have a splinter, man. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't forget. I can't even sleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> Over a splinter. He's like, really? Bam! And while he's on the cross, he's still loving everybody, still forgiving everybody, not for their injustices, but he's saying, you are not even the ones doing this. It's your fear doing this. 
He's downloading a whole other level of this. He didn't say, you guys are mean, but I forgive you. Because, you know, me, Jesus, you know, I got to live up to my books, you know, all forgiving. It's not what he did. That's, again, that's the little trick of the martyr. You know, the, they even have a <sighs> breath, right? You've heard your mom do that? <sighs> After all I've done for you kids, you know, that's not the Jesus part. That's not the Christ in her talking. That's guilt, you know? So, so he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He's literally loving the hell out of you. Oh, thank you. See, loving the hell out of you. The hell meaning the part that hates and judges. Why are they killing a Christ? First of all, remember, you can't kill the Christ. You kill the man. But if the man becomes the Christ, you can't kill him. So he resurrects. Get that? Mm -hmm. To prove he's not a man. He's God. And so are you and I. Now, if that's true, and I assure you it is, then when you're going through a divorce and when you're losing a job and are crucified, the victim, the martyr, or any other archetype, you've lost, you failed the test. You cannot resurrect, you will not resurrect today, and you will not ascend. All you'll do is fall through the trap door and go back to earth for another incarnation. Okay? Bless you. Nature... It's an interesting thing because God's nature is only love. Perfect, holy love. On earth, what is our nature? You know, it's like when people have to urinate. Oh, you, you, you know, nature calls. That's the best you can get? God's <laughs> nature is perfect love and yours is, you got to pee? <laughs> nature calls. Oh, look, honey, nature. Circle of life. We even sing it. Look, look, animals gnawing on other animals. <laughs> Is that what you th show a three-year-old? Look, honey, isn't that beautiful? Look, it's gnawing on the bones of a critter it killed. Guys, and we justify it. Well, you know, that's the cycle of life and the circle of life, and it's beautiful, it's nature. It doesn't exist in heaven, therefore there's a problem. There's something wrong with mankind's version of nature. Let me explain. Murder is never natural. Whether it's an animal murdering another animal or a person, it is not natural. But it is natural for murderous people. Fear-based people are going to do hurtful things. And yet we sing songs about it and call it nature. You know why? Because we're afraid to call it what it is. It's fear. It is not God. And yet we think it is. And so people will even, oh, you know, reincarnation. It's like the cycle of life. It's failure. You only reincarnated because you failed first grade or eighth grade or whatever reincarnation. 6,000 lifetimes. Oh, I failed 6,000th grade, you know. <laughs> reincarnation is not a high status. Look, I came back. That means you had to. <laughs> that means you, you didn't ascend. But we go, oh, no, it's really natural. You reincarnate. You say that because you don't know how to become an ascended master yet. And if, you, if that bothers you, or if you don't like me for saying it, you're coming back. <laughs> but if you can forgive me for saying it, you might not have to. Because you, you get it. You get what I'm saying. And you, the smile from inside happens. I totally get it. My not reincarnating is when I see through it all and it doesn't push the buttons. If I've got buttons, I've got lessons. If I've got lessons, I've got to learn them somewhere. The schoolroom of life. Where's that? It's here or another dimension, but you're still in the schoolroom. An ascended master simply goes, bing, oh, I got it. And now they might, if they choose, come back. That's different than having to. Buddha's explaining that the reason to reincarnate is based on desire. But he didn't mean like lust. He meant your soul's desire to purify itself. You know, people with their translations. Oh, he's got to be talking about lust. No, you have to reincarnate because of desire. What kind? 
to purify yourself. Everything's love-based. Everything's God, it's love or a cry for love. See it as that so that you never fail such tests. You get it. You realize what's really happening. I'm choosing to wake up. I don't have to reincarnate, but that's different from the bliss bunnies that go, I'm not going to ever reincarnate to this place again because it's so messed up. You are so coming back. <laughs> when you condemn the place and say, never again. When, when and I have clients, you know, that, oh, I'm never going to ever date a guy like this again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You won't when it doesn't matter. You won't when you, when you can say, they're just so inconsequential. They're so, like, it, meaningless. It's mean, everything is meaningless. Solomon, one of his strangest statements, you know, he loses his mind because he's, he's become the highest and lowest of beings. And then he has this epiphany after the dark night of the soul. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. And what he's saying is, I've had it all and it did nothing for me. As Buddha's saying, it's not even, you know, it's, it's an illusion. Get attached to it and you're going to hurt when it's gone. Even if it's Jesus. Oh no, we're supposed to mourn over his loss. No, you're not. Because then you make it real. I, I, I get it. I, filmmakers, you know, there are different movies made about the pain and suffering of Jesus. And, you know, well, what were they going to do? You know, put him on the cross and have him going, always look on the bright side of life. That's Monty Python. Anyway, um, gospel according to the Python. So, no, they weren't going to do that, and it would seem irreverent, but he experienced it, but kept refusing to believe that it had real power. He could have thought it away, but how is that practical for us? If you don't know how to think it away, you're just watching him think it away. He goes through it to say, I understand pain. There is, there is no divorce that's ever capable of making you feel what I'm feeling on the cross. Okay? That's kind of what he's saying. I'm going through the worst of it so that you can't say, but my mother didn't respect me, so you can't be the Christ because of it. Come on. You already are the holy child of God, believing in the powers that be, these people in your life. And we have the right to say, not today. If I can say not today while you're still in my life, good for me. If I have to say goodbye so that I can get not today, then do it that way. In other words, if you're strong enough to do it with people, hurtful people in your life, then fine. But if you can't make it to the understanding that nobody has real power while you're in their lives, get out of their lives. Because your sanity and safety has to be there before you can heal. There's no sense in you trying to heal an infected wound while people are rubbing toxins into it. Just get some space. Get some space. But when you do, don't hate them. You'll be tempted, and you can say it for a little while, maybe weeks or months. I'm getting space. I'm really enjoying my house. I still hate them, but I feel so much better about it. And then you'll notice when, you're, when you're, your affirmation is clear, your, your intention is clear, you're going to gradually notice I'm getting healthier and clearer and there's less hatred. Healthier and clearer, less hatred. And then it'll happen. The universe is going to say, how are you doing? I crucified. I died of the old. I had to stay in my house living on my own. Empty nest syndrome. I went through hell. You know, I had a partner and now I don't. Had a child, they passed away, something. Addictions and whatever else. I'm going, I went through hell. But I feel like I'm starting to resurrect. I'm starting to bounce back. See, you can say this to the universe. I did die, but I died well. If you die blaming, you're not dying well. Be tempted to blame, that's normal. To err is human, but to forgive is divine. So can you say, you know, start off, yeah, you know, they did this to me, they did this to me. That's normal. 
But getting to a place of saying, and what I do with it is up to me. Where I go is up to me. That's, that's talking resurrection. You see? We justify all these hurts and painful things and, well, it's natural, it's normal. It isn't. What we do to each other is not normal. God normal. It's not natural. God natural. It's a world that we miscreated and then we justify it and act like, well, that's as good as it gets. You see? We make it up so we can hide our weaknesses and call it nature. Addiction has no power over it. You're the child of God. I mean, it makes no sense. A holy child of God, except cigarettes got me. No, they had you. And there's a better word for it. Seems to, seems to have gotten you. That's it. When you're done, you'll be done. When you really know who you are, you won't be able to go, if it weren't for this, if it weren't for the parents I had, I could have been Christ. <laughs> Great. What you just said is, Mom, Dad, let me know when you're showing up on earth again, because I'll definitely come back to that family so I can get my lessons learned this time. <laughs> you know? And so you don't get too suspicious. They swap places. Dad becomes mom. Mom becomes dad. <laughs> you know? You know, when mom walks in the room and goes, that's enough, I mean, that's enough of that. You know, you'll know, you're on to her. That was dad, I got it. And it gets worse, you know, you can marry them. Uh, <laughs> it can happen. So, at the end of the day, Jesus is saying, I want to show you something, not just talking it, not just teaching it which you learn, you integrate. Okay, cool. But he says, I want to demonstrate this. No matter what they, not just saying it, no matter what they do, people in your life, you can resurrect. You can bounce back only if you die well. Die consciously. Do a swan song. Die well. Oh, you know. So instead of, oh, so-and-so just broke my heart. Try it this way. Oh my God, they just exposed me to that broken heart that I feel. Let me take a moment. Oh, there's also that guy, that girl, this and that. And th Bring them all in. Don't just whine about what one person did. There, there's many. And what I would say is, known and unknown. This life and any other. Bring them on. Bring them. It's okay. Jesus dies on the cross. And it's all so amazingly designed. Jesus in another lifetime as a warrior, he comes into Jerusalem and other cities in previous lifetimes, and he kills people. He's wiping cities out. He's a warrior. And he has the kings of Jerusalem taken out and hung on the outer fence in this other lifetime, where he ends up crucified. Do you understand? He fulfilled. There was karma there being fulfilled. No reaction. Because he's like, I get it. I'm not saying you have to blame a previous lifetime. I'm just saying that as Buddha taught as well, watch these things go by and don't react to them, and then you won't activate the wheel of life and karma again. Neutralize it by not investing in it, by not reacting to it. So in that sense... Jesus is well aware of what's going on. And you don't have to have a conscious memory to know that if something's happening, job loss, relationship loss, or whatever, die well. Don't blame. Feel, feel the, the loss. Feel the pain. Feel the sadness. But then expand it. I'm not crying for today. These are all tears for all my lifetimes. These are all the things I've ever suffered from. You see? Bring it all so you can process it all instead of having another one tomorrow. Just bring it all. It's a great opportunity. If you're going to die, die well. Fully. Bring it all. All these fears, losses, etc. Bring them. You never just had your mom die. 
It's every whatever your mom represented that died today. Dad, if he wasn't cool, when he dies, why are we sometimes sad? Because it means now I can't ever fix that, get that to change. Sometimes we're, we're mourning because we lost a good person. But sometimes it's because they weren't good. And you're crying because you realize, oh my God, that's permanent now. How am I going to ever fix it? They're gone. See, subconsciously you know that means now you've got to come back because it wasn't fixed. Wrong. You're a child of God. You can do anything. So you can say, when you walk out your door again, that dad is gone. Those things were left unhealed. I can feel that. However, when I walk outside today, I will see every male as a healed version of my dad. And when they're not nice, oh, I'm on to you. I forgive you. You know not what you do. Be gone. See, see through it instead of, oh, all men are this. Stop. And then some male's going to be kind. And you can, not in that moment, you don't have to say, God, you just shifted everything of my father issues. <laughs> That's a little much for somebody, you know. <laughs> I just thought I was delivering the mail. Jeez, like, get it? Delivering the mail? Ooh. <laughs> I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> so, delivering your mail issues. So... Instead, instead, while I ended today, there were a couple of, of men, one that looked like dad, one that wore the same cologne, one that actions, and it turned around, something feels different. Own it, breathe it in, I'm different. You see? Own every change, every healing, every shift. Own that. I'm not the same. You can be the same if you choose to be, but why would you choose to be? So Jesus demonstrates this non-reaction and continuing to love. Don't be afraid, he tells some women on the road to the Golgotha, uh, you know, to crucifixion spot. Um, he tells these women, don't be afraid. Don't be upset. It's okay. Don't believe in what you see, he tells them. In one of the lost books of the Bible, we see that story. Don't believe in what you see. What? That's powerful. But think about yourself holding that kind of center. And you're dealing with a friend who's just lost a partner. Don't say it's an illusion. That sounds cold. But your centered knowingness, taking their hand, it'll download. Not even saying it. If they're open, ready for you to say it, you'll be guided, then say it. But sometimes the inner knowingness is enough to change your room. When you walk into a room, you won't just change the room because you're spiritually enlightened. It's because you bring God with you into that room. Don't just bring, it's, oh, wow, when they enter the room, they look good or they great cologne or whatever it is. It's do you bring God into a room no matter what you're wearing and how you look. Doesn't matter what your size or your age. You, you bring something. And when dad or mom or whomever partners pass away, and you do healing work with them, understand you're bringing a new you into the room. And if it was a person who, who was loved by family members, you'll walk in the room and they won't know why, but they feel better somehow because I brought my healed relationship with them into this room. They're not gone to me, and if they're not gone to me, I brought them in the room. And something in you, if you loved them, will feel comforted. You see? The miracles are not distanced from us. They're right here living in us, as us, through us. So can we bring a different mind, bring a different person? Uh, you know, and, and, and Jesus with the crucifixion, he dies so perfectly because he dies in a state of perfect love. He allows the human to surrender. The people think they're killing him, like I said. But when he says, but I am that I am. So you think you kill me. It's, it's challenging for Jesus to even stay dead for three days. God, you know, because he's so aware, I can't die. You know, he's like in the, in the tomb, solitaire. And what else can I do to, you know, like I'm ready. I want to, 
You know, can I come out yet? You know, and it's all so symbolic. Every gay person that wants to come out is coming out of a tomb. Every person that was ever, you know, shut down verbally, you know, oppressed, coming out is coming out. Jesus is showing you, come out. He shows you by healing Lazarus. Great. But it hadn't been seen before where a person raises themselves from the dead. And it's not magic, so to speak. It's because he cannot die. He becomes life itself. He had to pretend to not fully know that for a little while so he didn't burst into light. He actually had to hold back, bursting into light. Finally, in that moment, he's in the tomb and it's time. He had been working in even those few days in the tomb. He's, he's not dead. He's not asleep, so to speak. He's seemingly dead, but he left his body and went into the astral world. And he cleared the astral world of fear and darkness and pain and suffering. Because prior to the time of Jesus, people not only suffered with reincarnation, having to li live out their, their stuff, you know, bounce back and deal with stuff lifetime after lifetime. There's also people that would be stuck on the other side in what was called hell. He goes into hell. Again, in the lost books of the Bible, you read about this. He goes into hell. The story describes it, you know, in, in visual details, you know, uh, novel t details. But Jesus shows up and kicks down the doors of hell. And it's an interesting conversation between Satan and Beelzebub because there's this pounding on the door. One says, the what's that noise? Oh, yeah, that's that Jesus guy that we killed. You what? We killed him. Why would you do that? Now he's here. <laughs> you should have let him live forever. You know? Now you killed him. His soul could leave his body. Now he's here. Jesus kicks open the doors in the story and frees all the souls. Releases all souls that were ever trapped in hell. That's why when you accept Christ as your truth, you can speak to demons out, they say, in Jesus' name. It's not in the traditional, unfortunate way that fundamentalism, you know, sometimes uses, and God bless them, because they're using it at all. It's fantastic, but to understand it's the love. It's not Jesus died for our sins, it's Jesus resurrected to break the belief in sin. The, go ahead. Okay. So, it's pretty fantastic if you think about it. The Old Testament, the Torah, the Jewish law was the wages of sin are death. Meaning, the reason you die is because you sinned. Remember. And then the Catholics take it from there. Original sin. Everybody is born with original sin, which means you must die. That's the law. That's a, one of the strongest universal laws. Because you are flawed, you will die. If you were not flawed, you would be immortal in mind, body, and soul, and you couldn't die. But because you're flawed, meaning because you sin by certain terminology, certain groups, you will die. So that means sin is bad karma. Bad karma is going to kill you. You come back again and again, and you're just never going to get it right. That's exhausting. Never? Never. Eternal damnation isn't like a, just a place called hell. It's called reincarnation. You have to keep coming back. That's eternal damnation. So, it's a false version of a cycle. There's a cycle, which means again and again, and it's exhausting. And then there's a circle, which is the oneness of God. There's a difference between those two. One is, and the other, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. It just kind of looks the same, but it's another lie we've presented to ourselves. I am as God created me, and I will to be the Christ on earth. This cannot change. So Jesus is bursting at the seams and finally says, now. And when he does, his light brightens. It's so brilliant in its flash that 
it actually left an imprint on the burial cloth, a photograph. For that to happen, you need a bright light. We know this from atomic warfare, where people's images were flashed, flashed onto a building where they were standing. When you have light that brilliant, it can actually leave an image on a building or a solid structure or a thing. Jesus flashed onto the shroud of Turin. True. Don't get into all these stories of skepticism. That's way gone. It's way proven now. But it's not the, wow, he flashed, that's amazing. I'm going to worship that cloth. It's, you know what? This means I too, in a flash, in a brilliant moment of insight, I can say, wait a minute. With that divorce, I did not die. And reach out to the Divine Mother. Show me who I really am. I'm afraid. I'm sad. I'm alone. All those human words. Don't make yourself be perfect. Look at the perfections. Put them on the altar to the Mother and let her take them. Let her bring you a resurrection. Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus could not have resurrected. Without the Divine Mother, he could not have been born. He could not have been not only born in Mother Mary, he could not have been born into Christ consciousness. We need the Holy Divine Mother aspect of God to birth us, because that's what mothers do. We are dependent on not the feminist divine feminine version that's popping around the world. We need the grace-filled, absolutely loving presence of the mother. And she births us not once every day if we let her. Bring to her your beliefs in being limited, which is the world that crucifies you, including yourself. When you look in the mirror and go, oh, oh God, I cannot believe it. I'm being crucified. There's all kinds of crosses on my face. <laughs> you know, there's a definite sign. Get all upset about it. See how that works for you, you know? Get all upset. You know what? Then laugh. After you cry, laugh. <laughs> laugh. You know, and just, wow. I, I was dead, and now I'm alive. You look in the mirror, and you see those crosses, and they remind me of when I thought I could be aged and die or whatever, whatever it represents to you. Laugh at it. Someone leaves you. Oh, they devastate. There is no they. They're just showing you old patterns. This is a hologram. You don't want to look at your TV screen watching a movie and get all into it like those are real characters. You know? Like, like you know, whatever... TV show or movie and you know when you start to be afraid to go in a swimming pool because you saw Jaws something's wrong with you <laughs> it's not coming up through the drain do you understand how narcissistic that is I'm so important that I know that shark's coming after me and it's going to squeeze itself through the plumbing of my swimming pool people were afraid to go swimming in a swimming pool I digress okay but still but, but you're doing the same thing, the shark. You're making up power that isn't there. These people you fall in love with and they break your heart, they're holograms. Holy grams. Or hollow grams. The gram, the messenger that comes to you with a hollow message is a very sad one indeed. Your job is to turn it into a holy one, a holy message. I was upset, devastated. Oh, look at the powers. It's so strange. Look at such power and investment. Buddha constantly warning you. The more invested, the more heartbroken you're going to get. This world is a place of suffering. Stop. Buddha, what is the number one cause of problems? Ignorance, he said. And he meant not a lack of knowledge. He meant you forgot who you are. And it leads to suffering. What's the solution then, they ask him? I wonder if amnesia is the cause, waking up would be the solution. How do we do that? Well, and then his doctrine, his teaching. Love, forgiveness, compassion, peace. You think that compassion means being so spiritual that you have amazing compassion for all screwed up human beings. Compassion in its real sense is, I get it. 
You're not actually forgiving bad people with real compassion. The compassion is that we ever believed we were separate and that we should and could harm one another. See? I'm sad that we have such amnesia running our world. Not, I'm, I'm going to be compassionate and transform this terrible world. If it's terrible, you've not aff affirmed its existence. I'm going to feel for us what kinds of crazy people would do this to each other. That is, moves my heart, me being any of us. It's time for us to, to break out of this. I announced a couple of weeks ago, the coming of the daughters of heaven. It's a wave of beings that have already been incarnating for the last you know, several uh, decades. These are beings that are, you know, just a long story short, uh, there's a new wave of angels that are coming to support mankind. Life as we knew it is changed and it's gone. It's going to keep now progressively moving into a total transformation. However, the world is dying. That's a crucifixion. Complain about it. You know, in the fall, go glue leaves back on the tree so you can live totally in denial. <laughs> fall is not happening. Change is not coming, ever. Stop. You know? <laughs> it's like, it, it's, it's okay. No, it isn't. You know what's speaking there? Fear. I hear your fear, but I will not allow it to control. My own fears, your fears, it's not to control me. The truth is, we're dying as we knew it. Murderous thoughts, envy, hate, malice, greed, it's dying. But with it has to go some of the bodies that it, it had been possessing. Don't try to resuscitate those bodies. Don't, don't you know, start doing CPR on shallow relationships. Got to bring you back, you know. Oh, come on back. One, two, three, three, resuscitate. You know, come back and abuse me. It doesn't make sense. Make me write bad checks, right? Just stop. Let it go. Goodbye. And you're not a thing or person dying. You're a part of me. Is that part God can't die? So it has to be something of my past, old beliefs. Goodbye. And we don't like that because I don't know what the next minute's going to look like. Guess what? It's got to be better. The more I die well and trust in the resurrection, meaning here comes a better life, the more it will be that. When the new life comes and you get it and you say thank you, that leads to your ascension. I don't mean your complete ascension up into the sky, some other dimension. I mean your ascension in your awareness level, your consciousness level. You go to another level. Every time you die well and you allow that to become compost, to feed the garden for another day. When somebody says, man, I feel like crap, good, that can, becomes compost. You tell them, man, I, my life is crap. Excellent. <laughs> Turn it into compost, right? That's not going to sound real good to some people, but, <laughs> but imagine reframing that. Let it become compost. No matter how terrible, I swear, no matter how terrible, no matter how brutal the death of your job or whatever it was, no matter how cold the winter, the greater the chance for a great spring and summer, my maturing into another level of life. And working towards an end here, and still trying to honor the questions you're asking, this concept, flowers and Easter and joy and what all that means. My ability to go to another level of joy doesn't come automatically. It comes from dying well, learning what I needed to learn so I can resurrect to the next level, just like school, from third grade to fourth grade. I'm not condemning anybody that has to reincarnate or got set back in school. That's not the point. It's just a metaphor. I'm in this world. I'm in this life. If I get my lessons, I will graduate to another level, and that's called ascension. Blaming, shaming, and so on, you know, it's, it's, it, that's not going to help us. We know that, the, the word responsibility. So all that said, everything's dying, and as sad, painful, scary as it can be, we all feel it to some degree. Still, 
die well. Be prepared to resurrect. Be generous and giving to people. When it looks like jobs are being lost, yet you're still giving to people at what you can. You're, 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 you're planting a new message that despite the world, if the world were talking about economy being terrible and you're still giving, you're breaking the trance. You're saying, not here right now, not today. When you're, you're, you know, you could be in a hospital, everybody at the hospital is sick, but you could still be doing prayers for others. You're showing them you're not believing in what you see. On your deathbed, to your last breath, to be able to say, love you all, you're, you're breaking the trance that it's supposed to be scary and despairing. No. No. To be alone. To be single. Oh, you know, you, what's wrong? Something's got to be wrong. You know? Oh, you, how, why would you be single? You're not supposed to be single. Look at me. I'm married to your father. <laughs> yeah. And your misery level's palpable. Like, take a pulse. You're not even alive. You know, the living dead, and you call it a marriage. Like, come on. Show people, I'm, yes, I'm alone, I'm single. How do you think, what makes you think I'm the problem? Maybe I got smart. Maybe I got wise and needed to take care of me for a while. You know, don't buy into the stories they make up about what you should be doing. I know what I need to be doing, and it's holy. You know, it's loving, taking good care of myself. You can still date. You can still have a smoke if that's what you do, just not judging it. The habits and the addictions, they will fade the more we wake up. They'll fade organically on their own. You know, it's okay. Judging yourself and making yourself not do such and such, at best, you'll retire that addiction and take on another one because the cause is not changed. Today, a palpable allowing yourself to become a holy being again. Just set the intention. The hierarchy of God has sent now another wave of angels into the world that people haven't talked about yet. They haven't named them mostly yet, but you're going to start hearing about them within the next year. And another wave of awakening took place, not of angels coming to the earth plane. I'm not talking about incarnating, working with people. Uh, the daughters, the daughters of heaven. These are pe people that are already here, already incarnated, fitting into one of a few archetypes. The Mother Mary archetype, the Mary Magdalene archetype, and the Thecla, who you haven't heard of, most of you, archetype. It's the, the, the one woman, the Divine Mother archetype, Mary. Magdalene, the one that's a little bit more just a normal person that decides to become born again. Normal meaning lifestyle-wise. Thecla, who was in the lowest, abused, raped by men, and so on, and decided to become born again. These archetypes showing the women, the daughters of heaven, but also men and the women, the female in us, the hopefulness. These women are being awakened all over the planet now. And um, it's going to start getting known in these next several weeks. I talked about this a couple weeks ago, and there was a palpable shift something in the room and people watching all over on the internet. They're, what? what? They, they, they knew they were just named. They were just given, that's the thing. That's what I was here to be. And it doesn't matter if you're coming from the, the perfect Holy Mother Mary archetype or the Thecla having been abused. It's a decision to make. And it's a calling. And that may not be your calling. You could just be a light worker. That's fantastic enough. But these daughters of heaven... Beings that are being brought in, uh, long story short, the daughters of heaven, f earthly wise, physical wise, really began in a sense in Lemuria. I'm not going to go into that story, but into Lemuria, an ancient civilization and continent. Lived there in a, in a very ethereal kind of a lifestyle, but separation ensued and ensued, and they splintered off only being born here and there. One of the only times they came together was as the holy women at the time of Jesus apostles, or better word for it would be disciples of Jesus, the men and women, the holy women, the holy family, some people call it. Many of these women will remember that time, serving Jesus and then eventually as, as servants or caretakers or supporters of Mother Mary and those who were also supporters of Magdalene and so on, taking care of each other. 
the way they looked, the way they felt, they were filled with grace. Despite whatever history, they were now filled with grace. And that's what these women are like being ignited, activated now. Something's happening in a lot of these women and some men. There's an activation taking place where they're becoming that holy family here now. They will, to a degree, get together in a network soon, but they're also fine working it alone because it's their presence, not their group that makes a difference. And they're a symbol of what we're all needing to learn and become. How can I be of service today to you, Lord? How can I be the presence of God today? How can I be the living Christ today? It's all going to keep coming back to that. Humility. How can I help? And everybody, male or female, old or young, everybody has to come back to that place. How can I be helpful? starting every day with that affirmation. Not, how cool can I become? How many books can I sell? It's, how can I be helpful? Today it's a word, tomorrow it's a gifting, it's a, the next day it's a hug, the next day it's something else. Being our holy selves. That often, a lot of them wear something on their head. That's fairly common. I'm not saying, if you're not wearing something on your head, you're not a daughter of God. I'm saying, I'm saying, that often they do because unconsciously it was a statement. Something here, like in the Jewish tradition, wearing this here reminds you there's a presence always with you. And so wearing something on their heads is common, but it's got several layers of symbolism. One, there's a presence with me. It's God. Another is, I don't want this world. I'm not interested in the games of this world. Not dissociating. It's investment-wise, no. And so it becomes a statement of no, but it is a statement of yes, keeping this in God and not allowing this to have its effect on me that it once had, and so on and so on. So peace to you all. Whether you went through, are going through, will go through some version of crucifixion, peace be with you. God be with you. Please be careful. Don't beg God to take you out of your crucifixions in life. Don't tell God to take you out of your divorce, to, to bring your ex back to you. Tell God to be with you while you go through what you're going through. Then you're anchoring light to the moment and to your consciousness. Even if God did decide to rescue you, you didn't pass a test. You see? We don't need that. It's like, be courageous. God, be with me. Help me to see this differently and feel this differently. Be with me while I go through this. That's really a, a prayer of a light worker. Please take a few centering breaths. Integrating, breathing in what you learned today. Make it yours. Not what a guy said, but whatever you liked and agreed with, whatever moved you, breathe it in. This is yours. I know this and name it in your mind. I know this. Now I get this. Own it. I am fine, I'm awake, I'm aware. How beautiful to own your enlightenment.
Let your mind take just one minute, objectively, almost in a state of marvel, all of life's crucifixions you've gone through. Don't drop into them and suffer them. Just step back and observe. Look at life's crucifixions. I'm standing in the light of God, looking at the many variables, variations of what life does. Sicknesses, deaths, losses, changes. And I remain as God created me. Going through the things I've gone through are normal. But I didn't have to let them destroy me. I get it now. My real self is untouched by any of this. says to the little girl, Talithakumi, arise, little girl, come forth, bounce back, Lazarus, come forth. Allow, allow, nothing to do, allow. Resurrect come forth from the tomb the beliefs and limitation come forth every cell begins to dance Jesus resurrected and he spoke to his friends. You see, I told you, we're children of God and cannot die. Feel that truth in you. Tell the world in your mind, not in a vindictive way. Just let them all know. See, the marriage, the, the crucifixion, it didn't happen. It's, I'm still here. I'm alive. Your parenting, your abuses, gone. They have no effect today. I'm alive. Feel alive, every cell. Feel a sound from inside. The depths of hell come out. Allow sound. Good. Let it take on a vibration. The rock rolls aside. Light comes piercing out of the tomb. Angels are there to midwife you forward. heavens so glorious I get it I get it I get it I feel you mother Holy Spirit of God
Good. Another minute more. Louder. Feel it. Feel alive. Surrender to the bliss. Surrender to the moment. Let the sound of each other carry you. Even if you're inhibited and you hold back, let the sound of us lift you. Come out. Resurrect. Your ascension awaits you. suffering come to life tell them come forth it's okay celebrate the life of God the life of love to the past are here 
light beings are present, ascended masters, all beings throughout all time that were working to anchor the presence of God are here. Those gathered around fires, those in sacred temples, differing dimensions, they're all here because there is no time. beloved child in whom I am well pleased and the world will never be the same Gradually integrate back into your bodies. That it wasn't planned, you know. It wasn't planned. It just happened, and you can feel that. And you know, it's like it's resurrection. It's wow. We can obsess on the the holograms of the past, but why bother? You know, life is waiting for us. Capital L, life. Life, love, good fortune, peace, wholeness, joy, celebration. I appreciate that so many folks around the world are joining us today and the reason for the talk, it's amazing. I, the Daughters of Heaven came into this and it's Easter and all this connection, I'm like, wow. And as I'm sharing this, I could just see the, you know, the thought forms of light bulbs, so to speak, you know, just the wow factor to it all. It's fantastic. So thank you for co-creating such a beautiful experience. And... Um, we have a, an event later today that takes it another whole level musically. So we're gonna, we're gonna join that. John will be here, of course. Um, so we'll come back to that in just a moment. We're going to take up our collection and do our closing prayer. <clears throat> if you're visiting the area or if you live here, please remember we have our healing room, the crystal bed. That's an incredible experience. You can sign up in the office or the bookstore. Our prayers to our beloved sister, Dosi. She fell and hurt herself, so she's, um, yeah. I think I mentioned it last week. Did I? Did I do that? Yeah. So she's, uh, she's bouncing back very well. 
<clears throat> she's not bouncing back so soon that she has stopped calling the fire department to get those guys to come over and, yeah. you know, <laughs> hang out with her for a while. Oh, you know, I, I think I twisted my ankle. Can, oh, yeah. uh, can you all stand and pray with me? Um, we appreciate you sharing with the right people, your guided people that, that you think would connect well with what we do here. The Global Center for Christ Consciousness, we've set a really beautiful intention to do great things. So at 111, it'll be John and Nina, who you heard singing, um, and as well as Alexander. They're presenting a musical sound code activation. What I would do if I were you, you know, have lunch, that's fine, come back, but try not to lose the space that we just created. Go do your thing, that's fine, but keep it in the back of your mind. Every so often, just breathe and feel what happened and bring that with you when you come back so they can just launch right to a high place. Next weekend, we have Bill Foss coming back. Bill's a wonderful teacher, and he specializes in healing and the Akashic Records and so forth. So there's more information on flyers in the uh, entryway, and you can go online and learn more. And last, um, uh, tw uh, April 23rd, I'll do, from 12 to 3, I'll be teaching the Hands-On Healing Workshop. Again, you can go online or take a flyer and learn more about that. All right. Please take your love offering with full intention, just clarity, your, your prayer that it multiplies for everyone involved, the givers, the receivers. Hold that thought. Oh, just such deep gratitude. Together, please, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you so much. Before we break off with our closing prayer, we'll take just a minute or two. Um, if anybody wants to share what you learned or heard today or felt today that made the most difference for you, and or for the people in your life, please share in a concise kind of a way. Love is the ultimate truth. Love is the ultimate truth. Anyone else? Yes? Thank you. Yeah, seeing the cross differently. Remember, the cross, in one respect, is earth, water, fire, air. It's an honoring four directions. There's all kind of beautiful statements to it. But at the end of the day, the cross is the symbol of this world. And it will get the best of you. That's the, the negative connotation. This world will have its way. It'll get the best of you. You will die in this world. You're going to die and to say no. No, it becomes now a, a different symbol. Beautiful, yes. I wanted to, I was trying to get your attention that you wrote this article on Lemuria. Oh. That's in this thing that's out in the foyer, so people should- Yeah, if you're that. interested in more, we have the oh. Spirit of Sedona magazine, and in there I wrote an article about Lemuria. And it's kind of just, you know, basics and so forth, but it's there if you're interested. We usually hand them out when you're coming in. Okay, yes? Die well. Die well. Yeah, isn't that cool? Change the concept, you know, just die well. And, and again, to everything, the divorces and the losses of love, die well. Yes, in the back. Understanding people's hurt, but not, having to accept it into your life. but not having to accept it into your life. Yeah, you know, healthy boundaries. Yes, sir. Yeah, know who you are, and there's a knowing who I am. Like, I'm Michael, and I'm a, and there's your version, and then there's who I am, capital I, A, and M. As God knows me, that's like, wow. Um, who else had their, yes? Jesus loves the hell out of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great one, isn't it? Jesus loves the hell out of us, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yes? Um, inner knowing is enough to change a room. I love that. 
The inner knowing is enough to change your room. You walk, you bring it. You know, you, you bring, you'll either bring a neutral person that's going to collapse into the mood of the room or a knowing person who's going to bring a light into a dark place. Yes, sir. Grateful for experiences. The lessons you can learn. I mean, honestly, the lessons. Graduate. And don't just talk about the lessons. Graduate. Where did, where did you go after that? You know, for example, I can go to groups and only talk about my same old experiences. But I could also say, and here's where I went from there. That's the key right there. Graduation. Anyone else? Yes, two more. Addictions organically go away. Addictions can more easily, naturally go away when you change consciousness. That's why God is into the 12-step program, why, why it's inserted in. Because without God, your chances of healing as eat more easily and organically lessens tremendously, exponentially. Bring spirit into everything you do. One more. I love your playfulness and laughter and helping us all laugh. Thank you. Yeah, um, you love the playfulness and humor. and Yeah, I, I never plan that at all. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't plan what I'm going to say in general. But um, I did have a second before we started. I thought, Easter and okay and wow. And it's probably going to be a fairly straight talk today. Like, we're just going to, we're going to talk about Jesus and Easter. I mean, I had this sentence and, you know, we're going to keep it. It seems like it's going to be kind of. You know, and I think the first sentence I said, whatever it was, you know, everybody's laughing. It's just, there's all kinds of reasons for that. The, the silliness. Well, because I'm kind of silly. But there are other reasons for that, I believe. One thing is lighten up. That's an, just one other piece. But I also believe, and I learned this years ago, I realized that when folks are listening intently, they, they're listening intently to what I'm saying. When I can switch gears and we laugh, you're off of me and back to you. You see what I'm doing there, what I'm saying? I, I, I saw that many years ago that that's part of why that happens. Um, it's it's switch, switch the energy back to the, each person. We laugh together because you were listening, you're leaning in, whoa, this, wow. And then, and in a way, it's an in-breath, an out-breath an in-breath, so it's a, a nice, it's a beautiful organic thing that happens when you're as enlightened as I. Um, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Pardon? Daughters of heaven. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. I'm delivering the mail. Yeah. Right. Delivering the mail, <laughs> he says. Yeah, as opposed to a mail in delivery, um, which is a painful experience. Somebody else popped their hand up a sec. Yes. What if I'm excited as I'll get out about coming back again and I can't wait to see what's next and I don't feel this. Just stay unattached to coming back. Just stay unattached. Wherever I am, God is. That's it. And if I'm here, I bring it. If I'm there, I bring it. You know. Yeah, it's, how can I be helpful? Bless you, John. Thank you for your, your gift. Yeah. Nina, thanks for stepping in and just following that vibe. Yeah. yeah, thank you. yeah. Remember that they, with Alexander, will be doing some miraculous work this afternoon. So join us. It's live, online, and here in person. Please stand for our closing prayer. <sighs> Probably not a conventional Easter service. <laughs> you know? Could you imagine, you know? That somebody online can show their friends, let's look at some Easter services. And they go to one and it's, Jesus died for you and you're not even worth it. You know? <laughs> And another one, there's all kind of smoke and ceremony and whatever. And then, and then there's us. <laughs> We're like going everywhere. Woo! 
And then they scan down and they look, oh, Sedona. <laughs> Only in Sedona. God bless you all. Thank you for, for laughter on Easter. Come back to life and laugh. That's, that's good stuff. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Centering. In the knowingness, the gratitude of what we learned today, and the eye contact, what, the thank yous. Soak that in too. Mm. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God is, I am, we are, and so it is. Peace be with you all. Thank you.